Hi everybody, I'm so excited that you are here. Welcome to my channel, I'm Carly. I am a sewist and a lover of making all sorts of things. And today we are talking patchwork detachable collars. Detachable collars are one of my favorite ways to just spice up a look and bring new life to garments that you wear all the time. They're so easily customizable. You can do lots of different shapes, sizes. You can have ruffles, no ruffles, detachable, attached, reversible, non-reversible. <laughs> They're just a really fun and easy project for beginners that you can incorporate in your closet so easily. Let's get into the video. Firstly, let's talk patterns. If you're making your first ever collar, I recommend downloading this free collar pattern which I've linked below. It's by Tilly and the Buttons and it's amazing. It looks something like this and it will sit like this and it's just really simple and it gives you the structure. But if you want to design your own collar, here are some little tips and tricks that I've learned along my way. So this here is a very normal shape. What we have is just a curved line that goes all the way to the fold mark and that's going to sit at the middle part of the back and this is going to sit at the front. So you don't want it to be a full semicircle, just a little bit less. Then, this is where it gets really fun. We'll call this curve a semicircle, but it's a little bit less than a semicircle. But basically, once you have your semicircle curve, you can have lots of fun playing around with whatever shape is along the outside. You could do a little triangular moment. You could extend this and have it as a really big collar. And this is my favorite pattern that I've made. So I've just extended this here and then the back, if you can see it, is just like a little square moment. So yeah, you can have a lot of fun designing your own collar pattern if you like. Just make sure you just do one side of the collar so it is mirrored on both sides. This is the collar that I'm going to be working with today. Unfortunately, I do not have a pattern, but this is the shape. See if you can eyeball it, guys. Let me know how you go. Otherwise, you can follow along with this free template by Tilly and the Buttons. And go give her a follow as well on YouTube. Her tutorials are exceptional. And also, apologies if I'm a little too excited. I just really like talking about patchworking and collars. So today I'm predominantly working with scrap material and I have a big bed sheet to line the piece. So these are all of the bits that you're going to need. We're going to need one patchwork extravaganza collar. We're going to need one lining of the collar and now that can be patchworked too if you want it reversible or it can just be in a plain cotton. We're also going to need a big long ruffled strip if you want to do a ruffle like me and ties to put on the end if you want to do detachable. If you don't want to patchwork, skip this step, but I'm going to show you how you can use your scraps to make this collar. The patchworking technique I'm going to use for this project is I'm basically just going to use all of my scraps and patchwork them together in a rough way so that I have a nice big textile and then I can cut my collar out of that textile. Also, we don't need to overlock or finish any of these seams because they're going to be hidden in the middle of the collar. Let's get patchworking. One of the most important things to do before you start patchworking is iron out all of your scraps. I used to work with my scraps all crinkled and then I would wonder why things wouldn't line up. Ironing fixes most if not all of these issues so make sure you give everything a really good press so as i'm laying out all of the fabrics i always make sure that there is like a seam allowance in between each fabric and then i just keep laying everything on top until i've got enough fabric and then i'm just going to cut my collar out so i've decided i really like the fabric up here so this is what i'm going to use you don't need a lot of fabric for the collar but i just laid out a lot because i'm extra like that you lay out your pattern i'm going to cut around and then very carefully i'm going to flip it over and cut where the fold of the fabric is When I cut out my collar, I usually put a little notch right in the center fold area and that's just to give me a marker when I flip my pattern onto the other side to repeat that process. So I highly recommend putting in a notch at that center point to help. Okay, she is all cut out behind me and the patchworking looks really cute. I'm excited to get into it. 
I'm gonna use two main techniques when I'm patchworking. The first one is just very simple, sewing right sides together. And the other one is I'm going to top stitch some of these pieces of fabric down to other pieces of fabric underneath it. For example, for this guy here, I'm gonna flip this piece over, stitch it down here, trim all of this excess away, and press it flat and then we'll have a really simple patchworking effect at the front. Over here, I'm seriously loving the natural way this fabric is. So what I'm gonna do is clip this seam so that it folds underneath nicely, press it down, and then I'm gonna top stitch it to this fabric underneath. This is definitely not the most streamlined way of patchworking, but I highly recommend you try it because you really get to play with the fabrics and just kind of allow them to be that the way that they want to be. You will need to use your brain figuring out which style of patchworking works best for different pieces. So I got to patchworking my collar and something really important to note is this is not a streamlined process. It's going to take a little bit of play, a little bit of figuring it out on the fly, but I think that's a really fun and great skill to develop anyway. So give it a go. Another thing is this is what pressing the seam out looks like. You put your iron in between the two pieces of fabric and you push them to either side and that helps things to lay as flat and as crisp as possible. And here I am doing the second technique of patchworking that I talked about, which is tucking the seam allowance under, pinning it down and top stitching it to the fabric underneath. One important thing to note is that even though the inside of your collar is not going to be seen, it's still a good idea just to snip off any excess bulk if you have some extra fabric on the other side. And that's just gonna help the collar to lay nice and flat when you're done. So after you've snipped off any bulky excess seams, you can continue to patchwork. Here I am demonstrating that second style of patchworking, which is the tucking the seam allowance under and top stitching. And make sure that you use pins when you're doing this, just to keep your shape true. Um, you don't want things slipping about without your knowledge or intent. So yeah, pin everything down and just go as crazy as you want. You can top stitch other fabrics on like I'm doing. You can add top stitching details. It's awesome. Now this is the point where I like to take my finished patchwork collar, which is looking kind of wild, and I fold it in half and make sure that things are even because if you're patchworking this way, there is always going to be discrepancy. Cool, so the collar is all done. It's looking really cute, but it is my style at the moment to add some of my scrap sequins. So I'm gonna cut a few random shapes out of this and then top stitch it on top of my collar. But while I do that, why don't we jump into this week's question time. The question this week was about sewing tulle. If I had any tips or how do I keep it neat? If you guys know my work from Instagram, you know I work with tulle all of the time and it can be quite a delicate and precarious fabric to work with. Some things that have really helped me with tulle sewing is definitely slowing down, not trying to rush through what I'm doing and keep my eyes on the fabric. Especially because it's a little bit see-through, it can be easy to let some of your fabric slip out so I just take it slower than usual. I also swap out my general needle for a smaller needle. My industrial takes different sized needles to my domestic but usually I might be sewing on my domestic at like an 80 or a 90 and then if I'm doing tulle I'll take that down to literally the smallest or thinnest needle I can get which might be like a 60 or 70. And I also just have a play with my tension and stitch length just until everything is sewing smoothly and not puckering. I inspect the quality of my stitch continuously as I sew with tulle. 
I don't do this always, but as a rule of thumb, I usually just loosen my tension a little bit and I also put my stitch length down a tiny, teeny bit. I have a lot of control over that on my industrial, but if you're on your domestic machine, just have a play and just see what makes your fabric sit as neatly as possible. If you're having any problems while you're sewing tulle, I recommend just having a check of all of the basic things. Is the needle relatively fresh? Is everything threaded correctly through the guides? Is your bobbin empty? Is your bobbin threaded correctly? Just have a look through everything and be really patient. And if you have to seam rip, that one you need to be so patient with. It is grueling work, but it's possible and just grin and bear it. And that's sewing with tulle. I'm not a pro at it, but I have spent a lot of time with the material and I think it's beautiful and just so worth it. Okay, enough of me rambling about tulle. Let's get back into the video. After pinning and top stitching down my sequin madness, I got straight on to making the lining side of my collar, which is just the exact same shape as your collar cut out from a different fabric. This can be a plain fabric or it could also be another patchwork fabric which you can use as a reversible side of the collar. The option is totally up to you. To make the ruffles for the ruffled collar, if you're doing ruffles, we're just going to use a really long piece of fabric. We're gonna cut this out in lots of different fabrics, sew them all together until it's a really long strip. Then it gets folded in half and this folded edge is seen on the outside and that will become the ruffle. I'm just gonna use this piece of fabric as my template and cut this out of lots of different fabrics to patchwork together into my long ruffled strip. Something that I learned off YouTube is that if you are sewing things in quite a big quantity, like here I'm sewing all of my ruffle fabric together, you can just do it in a batch. So you don't have to keep lifting the presser foot, lifting the needle, you just do it all together. And it kind of helps speed up the process. I know quilters use it a lot and it's totally a game changing process for me. Then I just pressed out all of my seams so that everything would lay flat. And then I got to pressing that piece of fabric in half as I am in this clip here. And now it's all prepped for ruffling. Alrighty, once you've got your long strip and it's ironed in half, right sides out, then we have to gather it. And if you've seen my gathering video, you will know how to do this. So once we're done with the ruffle, we're going to pin it to the collar and then trim any excess. And right at the end of the collar, we're just gonna fold it over twice and sew a stitch. And that way you'll have a nice neat edge right at the end of the ruffle. Anyway, let's gather and then attach it to the collar. right now that I just forgot one of my all-time favorite things to do when I make a ruffle. When you finish gathering it, put it on an ironing board, give it the biggest iron of all time and it will just make the gathers so crisp and really easy to work with too. I can't believe I forgot it, but do that before you pin the ruffle down. Don't be like me. To finish the edges of my ruffle, I just folded it over and folded it over again, just like you would a regular hem, and I top stitched that down. Once you pin down the rest of the ruffle, just make sure that you leave a tiny little space for where you're gonna put your ties. Okay, I have some notes before we move on. If you want this to be a detachable collar, we are going to make ties. But if you do not want it to be detachable, and you potentially wanted this to fit onto a dress that you've made, what you're going to do is follow the next step, which is sewing the lining to the main collar and flipping it inside out but you can leave the whole neck seam completely unfinished. Then you're gonna stitch that around your dress or shirt and you will finish that neckline with either a facing or a bias tape. But we're gonna go ahead and make ties and we're going to sandwich everything in and get to the final stages of our collar. Also, if you have any questions throughout this process, please feel free to add a comment in the comment section and I will reply to you and do my best to explain what I know about this process. 
The process of making ties is the same as making bias binding, except it's not on the bias, so it's just flat on the grain, and they are just long strips which we are going to fold in half and in half again, just making sure to tuck in the end like I am right now, just so that there isn't any raw edging left exposed at the end of the tie. Once you've finished ironing that nice and crisp, you can just top stitch down the edge, finishing off the tie. Then all you have to do is pin it to the collar and sew all the way around the edge of the collar. Okay, so now that you have stitched your ruffle and your ties onto the right side of your patchwork collar, we can finally line it. So you can just put the lining right side facing right side on top of that, we're going to pin it down and then we're going to sew, leaving a tiny gap right at the neck all the way around the collar. And this is where we're going to turn our collar inside out. Make sure you leave that space there. I'm going to clip all of the excess fabric, especially around the curves, and that's just gonna help things lay nice and flat. The magical time has arrived. The sun is beaming down in my studio. We are going to flip our collar sandwich right sides out. So using that tiny little gap that we left in the back of the collar, you just very slowly and gently flip it right sides out. And this takes some patience and it takes some time. She's all flipped out. The right side looks so good. I'm gonna give it a good old press. I'm going to stitch closed this tiny, teeny little gap that we made and she's done. us to the end of the project the collar is all done so let's have a look at how cute it is everyone the collar is finished I hope that you enjoyed this video and it was helpful if you make something like this please be sure to tag me on Instagram I would love that my Instagram is from Carly B and as always please let me know what projects you guys are working on I really love seeing your creativity and getting to follow along with all of your projects it is really exciting thanks for tuning in guys appreciate you a lot and I'll see you in the next one bye Thank you.